Hi folks, my name's Brother Neuro, aka Dick Coughlin, and I've been on YouTube for a very long time. And whenever I do a live stream, I'm always inundated with with uh, qu with these people who come in who seem to be stuck. They're what I like to refer to as internet boomers. They're these people who've been around since the since the before times since, you know, way back in the day, since the late aughts. And they seem to constantly bring up, and they seem to bring up, you know, questions to, to me about YouTubers who were popular or who were had their 15 minutes somewhat, you know, a decade or more ago, and they ask me questions about them as if, I, you know, as if I'm, st as if I have a fucking clue. People who I haven't made videos about for, you know, a good nine or ten years or so. You know, they could just type the fucking name of that person into the search engine and check themselves, but they seem to think I am some sort of like, you know, some sort of YouTube oracle who's always, in, who's always aware of all these things. I'm not, but it has given me an idea. It's given me an idea to do a, may, what may be a video series, depending on how well this one goes. Where I, you know, because I've done, because I've had so many, you know, rivalries and nemeses and I've had so many back and forths and dramas and fucking, you know, this, that and the other. Some of which have lasted, you know, a couple of videos, some of which lasted many, many years. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I made a video, if I did a video looking back at a particular user who I made videos about way back in the day, in the before times. Wouldn't that be interesting? And then, and not only that, I then respond to one of the videos they made back then, you know, or even a video that I've already responded to back then, and we can see how well it's aged since then. Does that sound like fun? Well, that's what I'm gonna do in this video, and I thought, there's only one place I can start, this guy. Always going to be miserable here, always going to be in a bad mood, offended by everything, insulted by everything, jumping up and down at the roadside at every opportunity, shouting at people. Mosque, mosque, Islamophobia, the Burqa, Sharia, the Islamo Nazis, Sharia, Islam, Islam, Muslims, mosque, Islamic, Islam, Islamophobia, Islamophobia, Sharia, Islamo friendly, Muslim, the Ground Zero Mosque, Islamist, political correctness, stealth jihad, Burqa, Islam, mosque, Islam, Islam, the Burqa, the Ground Zero. What? kind of a life is that? You know what I ask? Who's the fucking asshole? Me? For getting up in her fucking face? Personally, I don't do hate speech because I think hate is a self-destructive emotion and therefore rather a stupid one. It's at times like this, isn't it, that you realize just how much we need the United Nations. About as much as we need an ear infection. <laughs> Stop! Back! A fucking ear infection! The U United Nations, because they're not an ear but you don't want an ear infection! But it's not that bad, is it? In fact, if you probably had one, it wouldn't be the worst thing that happened that week, probably, given the fucking circumstances. But it's a fucking ear infection! Stop, Pat, please. Stop right now. If I don't get, don't go pull any more zingers like that, otherwise I am gonna shit my fucking pants. So, now, if you're wondering where Pat Condell's been in recent times, well, actually, you might think, you would probably think, if you remember, that this is probably a real prime good time for him to be pumping out the videos, what with the rise of, you know, the, the victory of Brexit and, you know, and, and Donald Trump, who, even though he initially was, you know, making fun of and making jokes about Donald Trump, he then, when Trump won the presidency, he then started supporting him and, 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 and everything he, he said and did. Um, but as far as video making goes, no, uh, Pat has kind of dropped off the radar slightly. In fact, in the last year, he's only made one video. This year, 2020, he made one video five months ago, right? And it was this one here. The virus that shames China. And I'm not going to subject you to it. You can watch it if you want. But in it, he basically defends the use of the phrase China virus. And in fact, he goes, at, he says, not only, you know, is it OK to call it the China virus? It, you should call it that. It is your duty to call it the China virus, to shame China. Because they're watching your videos, aren't they, Pat? Over there with their firewall on the internet. And I'm sure they care 
what you think. Yeah, what video should I respond to of Pat? Well, for me, there's only one video because uh, those of you who were around at the time might remember this because this for me was one of my least favorite periods of YouTube. It was such a, there was so much nastiness and toxicity amongst the, what was then still the atheist community. And uh, one of, and that was for many reasons relating to Islam and Muslims, but one of the main issues, and I'm going to be talking about this, and some of you probably forgotten these words, right? But it's been 10 years, almost 10 years since he released this, which is, and still is, his most popular video to date, which was called No Mosque at Ground Zero. Yeah, do you, do you remember the Ground Zero Mosque? Remember how that was going to kill us all? Let's see how right Pat was about that, shall we? All you Americans who've been following the Islamization of Europe from afar with horrified incredulity. Yeah, well, I think we've definitely got that one sorted, haven't we? I think that's been knocked on the head. Do you know yesterday, the body of a 16-year-old Sudanese boy washed up on the beaches of uh, France uh, after his makeshift like you know, boat capsized. He was trying to get over here. And why? so that miserable old cunts like you and Nigel Farage can fucking turn him into a pariah and they still come here. I think we all deserve better than that. If any of you are still nursing the cosy illusion that it could never happen in your country, it's time to wake up and rub those sleepy eyes because the moment of truth has arrived. In case you haven't heard, there's a plan afoot to build a 13-story Islamic centre and mosque a few yards from Ground Zero in New York. OK, well, let's get this in the third. Let's go over some old ground here. First of all, the idea in Islamic centre and mosque. Now, the original plans for it was at, at 51 Park Place. There was going to be a 13-story uh, you know, is a, a community centre with, on one floor a prayer space that was going to be multi-faith. Now, obviously, it was going, as it was bought by and going to be owned by Muslims, there would be, it would probably be for the Islamic community, but they, the geezers who bought it specifically modelled this community centre, and they were modelling it on the, on similar Jewish community centres and YMCAs. Now, is a Jewish community centre a synagogue? Is a YMCA a church? Having a prayer space doesn't equal a mosque. This is one of the points of contention because it's not a mosque. A mosque is a place specifically and only solely for worship or prayer. This was going to have 13 floors, one of which was a prayer space. The others was going to include a theater, an auditorium, a cafe and restaurant, a cooking school, a basketball court, a swimming pool. It was going to have an internet cafe. It was going to have fucking literally friggin anything you can think of. It's going to have a skateboard park. It was going to fucking, you know, it's going to, you name it, right? Fucking airport, everything. Well, that would have been a bit tasteless, but everything. And a few yards from Ground Zero, it was at least two and a half to three blocks away from Ground Zero. In fact, you couldn't even see Ground Zero from where it was, unless you were standing at the top of the building and looked over. So it's not a few yards away, right? But how far away is okay? Oh, don't worry, we'll get on to that. So yeah, but... It, it could, you know, you could, these definitions and, you know, and you can argue these definitions saying, well, it's got a prayer space, it's a mosque. They, you know, we'll get on to that later. A plan that's been enthusiastically welcomed by politicians and civic leaders eager to show how tolerant they are at other people's expense. Now, you're only half right on that one, Pat, because whilst the uh, local community advisory board who got to vote and decide whether to give them planning permission for this community centre, whilst... Uh, you know, it did win with a resounding 29 to 1. The uh, the the chairperson of the board, uh, a woman called Julie Mine, said, and I quote, I personally was uncomfortable with the language that talked about the religious institution. So it wasn't enthusiastically, you know, welcomed. They, they, welcomed, they, they voted on it purely based on the fact that it's going to be a community centre, not just, not this 13th, you know, story, big brown circumcised Arabic dick in the middle of the fucking 
in the middle of the city. Apparently it's not enough that nearly 3,000 innocent people had to lose their lives in a hideous act of religious mass murder, but now their memory has to be insulted as well, and the religion that murdered them allowed to build a towering triumphalist mosque on the ground where they died. Now, this is again his language, the religion that murdered them. Right. So, the guy who bought this, who is a guy called Sarif, he owns a company uh, called Soho Properties, right? And uh, he was the guy, he was the property developer who uh, built, who bought not only Park 51, he bought 45 to 51. And his plan was to build condominiums and, yeah, and, and, and apartment buildings, like quite, quite lavish ones, ones that would not be for your average work, your average Joe, right? But the religion that murdered them, so no fuck it. So if you're a Muslim, you're not allowed to be, and a triumphalist mosque. Again, it's a community centre with a, a multi-faith prayer space. If it's a mosque, then it's a synagogue, then it's a church. It's all them as well. It's any other form of prayer space. You know, it's for, that's what the words fucking community centre, that's what it means. Right? But since when do you give a shit about about people's feelings and whether or not they're insulting. You don't give a shit about them. Your whole thing is, I'm Pat Condell. I, you know, fuck you. You were the original fuck your feelings person, geezer, weren't you? Is America losing its mind? <laughs> it says a lot about the people behind this scheme that they had the bad taste even to propose building a mosque in such a place. But to describe it as they have as a tribute to the victims is beyond bad taste and shows a profound contempt for those who died. It would be hard to imagine a more provocative gesture short of standing on their graves and burning the American flag. And you know what, Pat? If they wanted to do that, they would have the right. Because freedom of speech is absolute, as you lot always say, and you cannot have it both fucking ways. You cannot sit there and piss and moan and talk about, fuck you, I'll say what I want because I've got the right. And then when someone comes along and does what you don't like, if that's in their rights, this guy had the right to buy that property. He has the right to do with it what he fucking wants. And if you don't like it, well, who the fuck do you care? You don't live in fucking America. And all about the victims. Can we talk about those victims for a second, Pat? You know, were you one of them? Do you get to speak for those victims? Who the fuck are? Who the fuck said you were allowed to speak for those? Any of those those three thousand who died? And you do know, Pat, and I know this is a small, small, small number in the overall scheme. But of those three thousand who died, you know that thirty-two of them were Muslims. They were they were victims in it too. Do they not get? You know, are they not allowed to be part of it? Is there no part of it? Is, it? is it in bad taste for them? You know, maybe, Pat, maybe, just maybe, these geezers aren't the fucking evil bastards. They, you know, maybe they didn't do this as a, as a multi, as a multi, multi million dollar fucking hole in the ground. But yo, wouldn't it be funny to trigger the fucking Yanks? And you do know as well that the World Trade Centers themselves... And the buildings that re will replace all of the World Trade Center buildings. You do know that they will also have prayer spaces. Prayer spaces that will be multi-faith, like the one in this, and used by Muslims who work there. So guess what? If you want to call this a mosque, there is already one on Ground Zero, and there will be another one when they rebuild them. Yet how typical of Islam, with its own hair-trigger sensitivity to the slightest imagined insult to do something so arrogant and so insensitive. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, right, how it, it's hair-trigger sensitivity to the slightest imagined insult. That is literally the description of this video. This video is you having a hair-trigger sensitivity to an imagined insult that ain't even, even if it is an insult, it ain't even directed at you. Talk about choosing to take offence when it's not given for them to choose to do something so insensitive. Can I remind you, Pat, that your website, right, your website on the about me, on, on the front page, it says this, Hi, I'm Pat Condell. No, I don't respect your beliefs and I don't care if you're offended. 
Well, guess what, fuckface? That goes both ways. If you don't give a sh you you've spent your life not giving a shit what other people fucking think and saying what you want, regardless of how much it bothered or offended or upset people, and now you expect people to care that you're fucking <laughs> snowflake. But but more importantly, again, he does it again. He doesn't refer to people. He doesn't refer to Muslims as people. He doesn't even refer to them as Muslims. He refers to them as Islam. How typical of Islam. Why does he do that? Islam is not a thing. Islam exists and is relevant only because it exists via the conduit of these human beings who, who, follow, the who follow the religion known as Muslims. But he doesn't say Muslims because if you replaced Islam with Muslims in most of the times he uses it, you would see he wouldn't be able to claim. It's a smart move to do He because he, he can now dismiss. He can use that whole, I don't hate is Muslims. I just hate Islam. Like that's like there's a difference between I don't hate Muslims. I just hate everything about anything that makes someone Muslim. But no, you say I hate how typical of Islam. It's not Islam, is it, though, Pat? Islam ain't a thing. It's Muslims, isn't it? So what you mean to say is, how typical of Muslims? And you fuck up at the end of this video, right? You fuck up and you fucking expose yourself, right? But and you say you show and you you make exactly the fucking point I just made, right? You do this all the fucking time, so you can sit there and say it's typical of Islam. Because when you say Islam, what are you going to think? You're going to think, well, he obviously means Muslims, right? But he's talking about you know he's not talking about he's not being bigoted or you know demonising people. He's talking about the idea. The ideology is relevant unless people. This is his way of saying they're all the same. This is what they want. It's gonna cost a hundred million dollars to build this thing, but nobody's prepared to say where the money's coming from. Now, a hundred million dollars was the estimate of how much it was gonna to cost to build this thing. Uh, and, and, but Pat's wrong on one thing when he says, nobody's prepared to say where the money's coming from. The reason, Pat, that nobody was saying where the money was coming from is because they hadn't got the fucking money yet. The money was going to have to either be borrowed or they were going to have to get the money from investors. People who would want to invest in this, in this, in this building or in this community centre. Now, they end up eventually doing that, more on that later. But at this stage, they hadn't got it. So they didn't have the money. It was literally just, this was literally nothing more than an idea. This was what they were going to do with one of the seven buildings this is what you know, uh, Sharif El Gamal was going to do with one of the seven buildings that he bought, specifically number fifty-one Park Place. And you could have fucking known that, but you put it in you put it in that terms, in terms like that. No one's prepared to say where the money's coming from, as if the money is you know, as if they're hiding something. They must be. Why would they? You know, you know, it must be coming from somewhere dodgy. Either that, or they're being given it. Just because they're brown and the politicians are doing that's, that's how you get a loan of a hundred million dollars. You know, it seems to me a much more appropriate place for a mosque in New York would be the United Nations building itself. Because that organisation has become so Islamo-friendly in recent years that frankly I'm surprised it doesn't already have a minaret. Oh, edgy social political commentary there, Pat. Here's the thing. Right, now, you mentioned the UN earlier in that hilarious joke where you compared it to an ear in Oh, I'm going to lose it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep my maintain myself. No, just keep. <laughs> no. So does that mean you're saying a perfect place for a mosque would be an infected ear? I suppose you wouldn't hear the call to prayer anyway. Right. Pat, the UN building since night has a multi-faith prayer space. Because obviously a lot of people from lots of different religions frequent that building. And it's had one since 1957. It actually had one prior to that, but it was, a, you know, pretty run down and shitty. So in 1957, it was renovated and it was rebuilt and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and made, made quite nice and lavish. Right. So they've got one. So it, and, and again, if you want to call this building a mosque because it's got a prayer space in it. If that's what a mosque is, 
then the United Nations building has already got one. And it's had one, strictly speaking, since it ever existed. But hey, I just, that's just me researching shit. You know, I'm not even American, but it makes me sick to my stomach to think that Islam is going to be allowed anywhere near ground zero. Again, with the Islam. What do you mean Islam, Pat? Islam's going to be allowed anywhere near ground zero. Do you think Christianity should be allowed anywhere near the area where the Oklahoma City bombing meant? Because I'm just, I'm just wondering, because I never heard you mention anything like that. Islam's going to be near ground zero. Does that mean most, you mean, do you mean Muslims shouldn't be allowed near ground zero? How far, how near is near? Before you, before you're fucking, and you're sick to your stomach. Well, you've been sick to your stomach a lot in the last, you know, the last few decades, Pat. But that's normally the chemotherapy, isn't it? Because 9-11 could never have happened if not for Islam and its teachings and its doctrine of jihad and its false promise of an impossible afterlife, without which none of those gullible lunatics would have been persuaded to carry out such an insane act. Is it the only thing, Pat? I mean, are you saying that there was no other factors that may have contributed to making, like, it's just, it's just they were Muslims, the end, dot com, like, no other fucking, there was nothing else that might have contributed to it. I'm not making excuses for them. You know, I'm not defending them. I'm just saying, you know, are you saying that it's the only factor? Any religion that endorses violence is incapable of delivering spiritual enlightenment. How obvious does that have to be? But, you know, so it's weird though, Pat, isn't it? Because you were like, you were seen for so many years to be like the fucking, you were like the end, you were like the, the end boss, weren't you? Of, the, of militant the atheism. And not just atheism, anti-theism. You, you used to go after everyone. But then you slowly got to this point where you realised, actually... I'm okay with certain extreme fundamentalist versions of religions that I'm used to, right? Let's not forget that shortly after this, when Pat made another video about, uh, the, about, about Islam, he linked in the description box a petition to, you know, uh, you, you know, asking people to sign it so to get the US government to step in to stop them, to make it, to ban them to violate their constitutional rights and freedoms that you claim to hold so dear. Right? To step in. Do you know, do you remember who set up that petition, Pat? It was Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson set up that petition. You also, in, uh, in other videos, not like around that time, were linking to World Net Daily as a source. World Net Daily. Which is as batshittery as you can fucking get. Right? Let's not also forget, Pat, while we're talking about endorsing violent organisations, you were an apologist for the fucking English Defence League. You even came out and tried to defend them as a non-violent organisation. And what was your proof of this? Oh, well, it says so on their website that they're not a violent organisation. And you make fun of fucking religious people? who use the Bible to prove that the Bible is true. And let's not forget the ultimate irony here, that you were given a personal shout out and big up respect in the manifesto of Anders Breivik, the man who carried out the biggest terrorist attack in Europe pretty much ever. More than any, more than any Muslims have ever managed. You were named. And what did that get? You made a two minute fucking video in which you basically said, no, I don't endorse this, but he was right about some stuff. And yes, blah, blah, but it's like, you know, this isn't the way to go about it. And then you, where is that video now? Oh, you took it down because you don't want people remembering that, do you? So fuck you. You're more than happy to align and endorse and fucking put yourself you know, and be, you know, align yourself with violent organizations that do not bring enlightenment you're more than happy to fucking sit there and try and gloss over the fact that you were one of the fucking big main inspirations for the fucking biggest mass murderer and domestic terrorist europe has ever seen you were happy with that 
You're happy to align yourself with World Net Daily and Pat Robertson and cunts like David Horowitz. You're more than happy with that. So don't you talk to me about violence and enlightenment, you wrinkly old fucking grey-haired, tennis ball face scrotum-looking twat. And it has no right even to call itself a religion. Did you hear that? Islam has no right. Well, Islam doesn't have any rights, Pat. Again, Islam is not a thing that has rights. It's an, it's an ideology. But also, Pat, um, I'd have thought that the guy who prided himself on being the king of, of, of hating religion, the guy who literally, you know, at this point in his fucking, you know, was famous for talking about nothing else, the guy who calls his fucking weapon godless comedy. Yeah, there's no fucking jokes in it either, right? You're, you should know what a definition of a religion is. And it does fall under the definition, Pat. It does have a, it is called a religion. Not because of political correctness, or anything else, it's because it's a fucking religion. Without the shield of religion to hide behind, Islam would be banned in the civilised world as a political ideology of hate, and we have no obligation to make allowances for it any more than we do for Nazism. Oh, so it's a political ideology, and of course, we don't allow hateful political ideology. Well, actually, we do, don't we? Because, I mean, in the UK, Pat, you know, we've got we've had the BNP, the National Front, you know, the English Defence League. Yeah, I mean, they're, poli you know, we, we, we allow political parties who, who, who say hateful things, don't we? And, and, and no one's making allowances for it, Pat. Uh, no one's making allowances for anything. You know, a, a, you know, a guy has, you know, an American citizen who has money, a property developer, has purchased or in the case of some of the buildings, you know, uh, put a deposit down and leased uh, before ultimately purchasing several buildings which he wishes to develop and, and, and do, you know, with whatever he wishes. That's, you know, that's what's happening. And if a Nazi wanted to buy those buildings and do with them whatever he, you know, which, then guess what? He would be sub, and you know that you know th these buildings. They can't, you know, they have to follow regulations and laws and anti-discrimination laws. So, no, no one's being, you know. And speaking of Nazis, Pat, actually, you say that it's interesting because, as I mentioned earlier, you know, even though you started off taking the piss out of Trump uh, when he first came about, and that when he won, you suddenly flipped and you were, you know, you're all, you know, you were diving in balls first into the abyss. Yeah, I seem to remember. What, so what you're saying about Nazis again? You will not replace us! You will not replace us! When you're done with the stairs, move back! When you're done with the stairs, move back! You will not replace us! When you are done with the stairs, move back! You will not replace us! Very fine people. Yes, both are totalitarian and both divide the world unnecessarily into us and them, the pure and the impure, and both make no secret of their desire to exterminate the Jews. You're sat here basically saying that all Muslims are totalitarian, violent, anti-freedom, anti-diversity, and basically they're Nazis who want to, you know, who you know want to all want to exterminate the Jews, and you're making this blanket generalization whilst also criticizing them for having a black and white mindset and dividing people into pure and impure. But we were all more or less on the same side against the Nazis. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a joke, was it? No. It would be nowadays. That has not aged well, has it? Whereas the Islamo-Nazis have got plenty of friends among people in the West who ought to know better. See, Islamo-Nazis. See, now, I've brought this up before. I'll say it again. Now, you want to use, you've used the term Islamo-friendly. You've used the term Islamo-fascist. You've used the term Islamo-sympathizer. And now you've just used the term Islamo-Nazi. Dude, if, if Muslims and Islam is equal to Nazism, you don't have to use the term Islamo-Nazi. How many, how many of the Nazis, like the original Nazis, how many of them were Muslims, Pat? Oh, they weren't, were they? No, they marched under a different, they, they were supported and backed up by a different religious institution, weren't they? Yeah, the Catholic Church, wasn't it, Pat? 
Yeah, I know. They met with a mufti, Giza. Yeah, because people who hate Jews can sometimes make strange bedfellows. But guess what, Pat? I don't think that Giza was speaking on behalf of everyone. Certainly not the Muslims who fought and died fighting against the Nazis. That must have been a conflict for them, eh? Who you fought and died for? Well, you know, you've died for something. You ain't fought for fuck all. And you're going to sit there and say Islamo-Nazi. But also, can I just say, you are the same people who refute, who reject out of hand the word Islamophobia. And the argument you always go, it's a made up word. Well, all words are made up. Words don't exist, you know, independently of us. We have to create words. It's not like there were words floating around on their own before we turned up and invented them, right? But you can't, so, you know, and yet you've invented more words. Whereas Islamophobia, it's in the dictionary, Pat. So that's legit. Is, is Islamo-Nazi in there? No. no. Now you can use it, but you can't complain about other ones being made up. People in the West who should know better. So the people who've bought, so so the people who were behind buying, you know, the, uh, you know, who wanted behind this community centre, they're all totalitarian, you know, anti-Semites who want to exterminate the Jews. You know that. It's true that diversity has been good for America. It's been the making of that country, but... but American diversity has always been grounded in respect for the values, the individual liberties that make America what it is. You mean individual liberties like the right for someone to take money, their money, right, that, that, that is theirs, and to spend that money on a piece of property and then to develop that property and then to do with that property whatever they wish as long as it's they're following regulations, as long as they're following all of the laws and all of the, and you know, they're beating, you know, everything's legit and everyone knows, you know, there's nothing, you know, that's it. That, what about that problem? What about the, the, what about the rights of someone to do that, Pat? What about the rights of people to, what about the freedom of religion? Freedom from, freedom of religion, the right to believe in whatever you want, the right of freedom of speech, the right to buy property, all of these things, these are all part of the system. And if an individual, Pat, you talk about an individual, you ain't done fuck, you ain't, you ain't interested in individuals, motherfucker. You've sat here and tarred 1.7 billion people on the planet as all being fucking extremists, you know, terrorists, you know, terrorists who want to sit there and offend people, who, who would literally go out and buy seven buildings and spend, spend tens of millions of dollars. Why? Just to wind you up. Islam rejects those values, and that's the difference, and it's a very important difference. Again, Islam rejects it. Does it, Pat, or does or do Muslims, right? So you mean Muslims, didn't you? Muslims reject those values. All of them. All Muslims reject those values. And listen closely, because in, in about two or three seconds, he's about to fucking give it away. Islam despises what America is. It rejects everything America stands for, including freedom and diversity. And any Muslim who denies that is a liar. Do you hear that? Any Muslim who says otherwise, so any Muslim who tells you that they're okay with diversity, any Muslim who tells you that they're, you know, that they, they're, they're, they've got no problem with freedom of speech, with equality with you know all of these things any muslim who says otherwise any woman any muslim who claims that they are not at their core a totalitarian oppressive fascist extremist any muslim who tells you otherwise is a liar what is that come on all you people who he doesn't hate muslims he just hates islam what was that Imagine he said that again now, now replace Muslims with Jews. They're just a religion, aren't they? The organisation behind this scheme is called the Cordoba Initiative. Well, actually, the Cordoba Initiative wasn't behind this scheme. They were partners in the scheme. Uh, Sarif El Gamal, the guy who owns so Soho Properties, he's the guy who bought all the properties. Right? He, bought, he, bought three, he bought four of the buildings, but three of them were owned by another company called Con Ed, who he paid a 700,000 deposit and then 33 grand a year lease. And then he, you know, he, he immediately, you know, you know, pulled in his uh, contractual, contractual right 
to, to buy it and he bought it, I think it was somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 million for the rest of the buildings. Um, and, you know, the other buildings were four and a half million. So he got all seven bit for 14 point. And one of the buildings, one of the buildings, 51, right? There was 45 to 51, 45 to 50 were gonna be condominiums and apartments and 51 was gonna be that, you know, and, it, and Cordoba Initiative were only involved with, Cordoba Initiative were, you know, were involved with you know, sort of working with him to try and get the, uh, you know, things like, you know, funding, and, uh, you know, Imam Fazal Abdul Ralph is like, kind of like, you know, an ambassador for Islam and American relations and that. His job is literally to go around the world and speak to Muslim, you know, countries and other, you know, other Muslim, you know, Muslim uh, communities and tell them, yeah, America's great. Come on, it's brilliant. He even said that in his mind, you know, the ideal version of Sharia law would be the US Constitution. Right. There's your there's your radical extremist. Right. Um, but yeah, and uh, but hey, whatever. Again, n n I'm thinking to nuance, you know. Building mosques on conquered sacred ground is standard practice. It's what Islam has always done to assert its supremacy, and that is what's happening here. Right. So you're saying that New York is conquered sacred ground, is it? And that's why they're building this. That's why they're building this building. You know, that's why they're building it, you know, 10 years later, they've decided to buy, because it's conquered ground. So that ground, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure it still belongs to America, that land. And I'm pretty sure the guy is, you know, the, the guy that is an American citizen. So it's an American building in America owned, you know, owned and, you know, it's all, everyone involved in it's American. Everything's American. It's not. It's not conquered ground, Pat. Of course, there are extremists and nutters out there in the world. There are Muslims out there who are Looney Tunes who might choose to spin it or view it that way. And uh, but just because they and they and they did, in fact. But just because some nutter thinks something or like or says something or believes something doesn't make it true. But well done, Pat. Well done, because what you're about to do is take these people from just nutters who believe something, believe utter bullshit that's complete nonsense. You're about to legitimise them, aren't you? And they also know that once it's built, it'll be there forever. Forever? Why, what's it made out of? Dark matter? As a permanent affront to all Americans, gloating in triumph, and a major bridgehead in the ongoing stealth jihad. That's how the Muslim world will see it, and that's how they'll be encouraged to see it. And to be fair to them, that's exactly what it will be. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for that, mate. See, what you've just done there, you've just legitimized, you've just told all those nutty nutters out there who, who want to spin and view and, and believe that this is some triumphalist, you know, is some triumphalist mosque on conquered ground. You want to believe, you, you've just, confirmed that for them why do you want to give the terrorists everything they want pat why are you choosing to to agree with and side with the terrorists why do you hate freedom pat confirming what they've always suspected jesus have souls they plan to open it next year on september the 11th the 10th anniversary of the atrocity is that tasteless enough for you is that tasteless enough for me? Well, it's interesting you should say that, Pat, because actually, um, no, it's not tasteless enough. Do you know why? Because that's complete bollocks. Um, for, for one reason, simple reason, like I said, they don't have the funding. And uh, uh, and uh, Sharif uh, El Gamal, like his priority was the other six buildings and turning them into luxury condos. The um, the 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 community centre wasn't his primary uh, idea. There was never. Never any, uh, you know, you, I, I'm assuming you got this from one of your shitty fucking websites that you fucking frequent from one of those fucking you know, Looney Tune wankers like Pamela Geller or Richard Spencer or, you know, or whatever, you know, but no, Pat, there was never a plan to open it on September. Do you honestly think you could build a 13 story community centre that was elaborate and extravagant as the one they were planning in under a year? Pat. They didn't even, they hadn't even started building it a year later. 
you know, September 21st, 2011, right? Which I know some people are going to go, oh, they probably moved it back 10 days. Yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck, okay? It doesn't matter now because it didn't open. There were no plans to open it. It was never going to be fucking ready. It was never going to be done. And not only that, Pat. It weren't done a couple of years later. In fact, they didn't even get the funding for it. They didn't even manage to get the funding to start building the condos before they were building the they were going to build for the community centre until 2015. You got some from a company called Malayan Bank Limited, and uh, oh yeah, and so 45 million from Saudi Arabia. But hey, you like America, and they're fucking political allies of America, so you know. Hey, it's all good, isn't it? You don't have a problem with that, you know. You you seem to brush over that, you know. So, yeah, you seem to forget that America, this wonderful, brilliant country that, you know, you're terrified is going to be... You know, yeah, the fact that they're allies with, with you know, with the country, you know, who produced, like, 15 of the fucking 19, 9-11 hijackers. You know, that, you know, that doesn't seem to bother you, does it? They sell weapons and arms to those fuckers. Yeah, that doesn't bother you, does it, Pat? No, of course. No, of course. But I'm sure this... I'm sure this... Yeah, but... And, and not only that, Pat, here's the thing. Uh, eventually, they scaled it right back down. The guy fucking ended up sort of saying that he was just going to have it as a museum... Um, with a prayer space and maybe a cafe and yada, yada, yada. And it got scaled back and scaled back. In fact, Pat, get this. In 2017, he handed in, he handed in new plans, right? And he was apparently, at this point, already $10 million in debt. In fact, the last time, the last record of anything coming out of there was December of 2019, when they still had not even started building Park 51 Community Centre. And given how 2020's gone, I'm going to guess they still haven't started yet. So here we are, Pat. It's gone from this fucking triumphalist giant erect mosque celebrating the deaths of the fucking innocent victims of 9-11 that's going to be a fucking Al-Qaeda brainwashing camp. You know, and presumably a place where they can fucking, you know, they can fucking, you know, with, with rape rooms and places they can, you know, strap bombs to children. It's going to be all of that fucking shit, you know. It's going to be all that. It's going to be, it's going to be, the, this is the end. This is the moment of truth. And here we are in 2020, 10 years after this fucking piece of shit video you made. And it ain't even started yet. And I think you... Oh, everyone else an explanation. Because if I uploaded a video that was this fucking shit, that was this embarrassingly inaccurate, at any point after the fact, I'd take it down and retract it. You know, like an intellectually honest person would. I'm surprised they haven't organised a 757 fly past. If they did, that would be hilarious. And it can tell this group and the politicians who support them that enough is enough and that this is one insult too far and that America is a big country and there's plenty of room for them to build their offensive mosque if they have to somewhere else. Somewhere perhaps more appropriate to the spirit of their religion. In your girlfriend's ass. Peace and God bless the Kuffar. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane. And if you've got any other ideas for videos or for drama, if you're someone who was around back then and there's anyone who I had drama with who you'd like me to go see if I can go over an old video that I've gone over or you know, some, old, you know, some, some old trip down memory lane, then post it in the comments section. Also, if you enjoy the videos I make on this channel, you should, well, if you're not subscribed, uh, and uh, ring the bell and all that other crap. And also support me on Patreon because this is my job and I'm disabled. And if you don't, then I'll have you cancelled. Right? Anarchy. And may God be less, Mother Kofaka.